I don't know what to say to you. <laughs> Top macaroni. Okay, we've got the curry. I just added some. Finally at the place. Got lost a bit. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Your support is much appreciated. Thank you to ready for a kiddies party. So let's just finish the coffee, start cooking and get the day started. I'm about to start cooking lunch. On the menu for today is a beef lentil curry and a macaroni with mince. So I'm going to start, start that now because Eden and I are going to the birthday party and then hubby and Micah are staying home. So I'm just going to cook lunch for them, get that done. And then we'll start getting ready for the party and then we have to leave soon to go. So, I and then just get the Sunday started and then just get the lunch done, sorted so they have food. And then we're going to be off. Okay, so let's get cooking. Guys, you know what I just realized? I just realized I don't have any garlic and ginger paste or just any garlic and ginger in my house. Um, but it's fine. That's It's not a train smash. So... We're gonna just keep it moving. So our ingredients, let me just grab you. my ingredients for the curry would be, I'm gonna give you two options, okay, in terms of the curry uh, spices. So if you don't have whole spices or you don't have um, a specific curry blend of spices, what I like to use is the Raja. I use the Raja Hot. That's the one that I normally get. And then I've also now, I also use um, the Taj Mahal. I use this as well. This is a this is an extra special Durban masala. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix the two, but you can just use the raja if you want to. This is quite spicy. Um, we like our curry is hot and spicy, especially mommy. But um, this is quite spicy. You do get the mild, etc. So there are ones that are not as spicy as this one. Okay, and then you would obviously I don't use fresh tomatoes in my curry that is normally what you would use i like to just use the tomato paste i love lots of coriander in my curries as well and then i've got some red um, onions so for me to make a nice gravy with your curry is the more onions the better if you're not an onion person i don't know what to say to you <laughs> but if you don't like the onion then just maybe do one onion but I'm using three because they're quite small. But if they had to be just the normal sized onions, I would have also just used two big sized onions to get a nice thick gravy for the curry. Okay, and then we're just going to use basmati rice. I've got some left over. And then for the, for the mince and spaghetti, we're going to use the kno bolognese spaghetti cooking sauce so i like to use this now the base for this mince that i'm going to use right you can use the base for lasagna as well it's very easy simple okay then what i do is i normally just instead of using tomato paste i would put a little bit of tomato sauce in there your typical tomato sauce that you have just to help with the acidity that's what i normally do when i do that but let's get cooking and I'm going to show you step by step what I do, how I do the curry, and I'm going to try and just talk you through it. If the family doesn't make too much noise, but I'll try and talk you through it so you can see exactly what I'm going to cook. Okay, let's go. To start off with, I'm going to start with the curry because this is the one that, <clears throat> that takes the longest. So let me bring it closer so you can see what I'm going to do. So first thing we want to get our curry, um, Sorry. So first thing, we want to get our onions prepped and chopped. Okay. So let's go rinse them and then we're going to chop. Okay. Now guys, sometimes I'm not too worried about the onions because it's going into the pressure cooker, right? But I'm going to chop it. If you don't have a pressure cooker, you want to chop your onions as finely as possible because my son doesn't like to see onions in his food, so I try to just chop it as small as 
possible. Okay, so our onions is done. Onions is chopped. I'm going to put some coconut oil or whatever oil you cook with, but I use coconut oil. I'm going to put the coconut oil in the, get the pressure cooker ready and then add the coconut oil and then add my onions. Okay, so I select saute on my pressure cooker. Just give me a sec. Okay, so she's ready. Let's just... Okay, so that would be about a tablespoon. Yeah, it would be about a tablespoon of oil, whichever oil you're using. Let's do a tablespoon and a half. Let's do a tablespoon and a half. So we're going to just wait for the oil to melt and for the pressure cooker to get heated up and then we're going to add the onion. Okay guys, so our pot is warming up and the oil is heating up now. So I'm going to add the onions. Okay. so that the onions can get coated with the oil. So we don't want to move things around too much. We're just going to leave it, let it sizzle for a few seconds, and then we can come back to the pot. Okay, guys, so our onions is sizzling away. Just give it a quick stir. I must actually get my dish and I'm going to get it now. Now, what I'm going to do now with the coriander or the dania, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my handy scissor. I'm going to try and only get the stems of the coriander while the onions is cooking because there is quite a bit of flavor there as well. So don't just chop it off and chuck it in the bin. When you're making food like this and you want to use coriander, take when you're frying your onions, you, you chop in the stems of the coriander as well. And that also gives a nice flavor. There's flavor there as well. So... We don't want to discard that. So I'm just, the stems go in first with the onions. Let me just get my wooden spoon. I've got my wooden spoon and now I'm just gonna give it another stir. And remember with red onions cook much quicker than your yellow or your white onions. So you need to also just watch it that it doesn't get really golden. You don't want it to be golden brown. You want it to be slightly in between. My sinus is acting up, guys. You're telling me. So now that we've got that, let me just show you what I've got going in the pot. The onions and I've got the coriander stems in there just sizzling away. Now the onions is almost cooked, basically, right? But I'm going to let it go a little bit longer. It needs a few more minutes. So guys, so when the onions is practically almost cooked with the stems, right, you would add your garlic and ginger paste or your fresh garlic and your fresh ginger. Whichever way, I don't judge. I use paste all the time. Sometimes I want to be bougie, I use the fresh. So at this point, now that your onions are becoming a little bit translucent and you can sort of see that it's almost cooked, you would put your garlic and your ginger in here. So we're going to let this go for a few more minutes and just let the stems cook a little bit longer and then we're going to add our tomato paste and our spice. Everything is coming together nicely. So what we would have in the pan here is onions, our coriander stems and our garlic and our ginger. Now we're going to add the tomato paste or your fresh tomatoes, whichever one you, you choose to put in there. I'm going to put the tomato in now because I want the tomato, the rawness of that tomato to cook out of it. Okay, so I'm using about a tablespoon of the paste. I don't use too much because remember this is quite concentrated. Okay, so at this point you would want to now add a little bit of water to help it basically along to start cooking nicely. I've added some water, not a lot, just a little bit. Okay, I don't have a measurement for the water guys, just... I with the eyes with the eyes. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna just leave that for a few minutes to help the tomato paste cook and to get that rawness and that acidity, acidity of the tomato paste to let that cook out of it. I don't add sugar. Uh, some people like to add sugar to help with that acidity. That's not me. I don't add sugar. 
I like my things to be savory and I'm not a sugar girl as well. So we're going to leave this and let this simmer away for a, another minute or two and then we're going to add our spices. While that is busy sizzling away, I'm going to prep my rice, get my rice on the stove and get that cooking. Rinse your rice please guys, rinse your rice. So I'm going to do about a cup and a half because it's just the two of them and whatever's left over we can always use again for tomorrow for them for supper. But I'm going to cook a, a, about a cup and a half of rice. I'm going to put that in my pot, rinse it around, swirl it around, rinse it until the water runs clear. Then I'm going to add a tablespoon and a half, uh, not a tablespoon, let's say a teasp two teaspoons of salt into my water. Okay, I'm going to let the water first warm up before I add my salt because when you add salt to whether it's pasta or rice it slows down the cooking process so let the, let the rice let the water warm up first before you add your before you add your salt okay so I said so this is the cup that well, I don't know normal cup that's the cup I use so we're going to do Cup and a half. One and a half cup, sorry. Mm, I might actually do all of it because I mean, yeah, I'm just gonna. Oh, it's actually perfect. Cup and a half in here. Let's go. Nicely done. And now we're going to rinse until the water runs clear. That's what it looks like with the tomato paste. Because so the tomato paste is practically. Oh, come on. The tomato paste is practically not nicely cooked. At this point, I'm going to add the spices. So I've got a tablespoon of the raja and I've got a half a tablespoon of the Durban masala. We have to cook the spices, guys. The spice is raw. The only spice you don't have to cook like this is your garam masala. Roast it for you. So this needs to cook as well. So what I normally do, just to help it along, I'm going to add a dash of water. Okay. I'll just fix you guys quickly. There we go. So we have, we've added our dash of water. How are we going to know when the spice is cooked? When the oil starts to separate, but I'm going to show you what it looks like. When your oil starts to separate, you know that your spice is cooked, and then you can start adding all your other little add ons. I've got my rice rinsed and everything. I've got the water going. So I've got about, I would say, three cups of water in here. Okay, I've got it on high for now because it's basmati rice, right? We don't want to make porridge. We want to have rice, okay? So I've got it on high for now. I want the rice to start, the water to start bubbling. And then once the water starts bubbling, I will turn the rice, sorry, not the rice. I will turn the plate down and then I'm going to add my salt and then let it simmer to al dente. So it's not cooked yet. It still has quite a bit of bite to it, and then we're gonna rinse it, put it in our colander, and then we're gonna steam the rice. Let the rice steam to cook further. I really smell it. I can already smell that the spices is almost cooked. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add some more water because I can see that it's not cooked fully yet. So let's just add a little bit more water to help cook the rice. Um, sorry, not the rice, the spice. So let's go. Just a, a small little dash. Spices is cooked. You not only will smell the difference, but you can also taste the difference definitely. So, if you don't have the Taj Mahal spice, you can just use the Raja. No problem, right? If you just have the Taj Mahal, you can just use the Taj Mahal as well. Just if you are not a a person that can cook curry from scratch, that's a, it's a good cheat in my opinion. It's a good cheat. We're going to leave this for a few more minutes and then we're going to get started on our mince and macaroni. Okay guys, can you see how the oil has separated? You can see the on the sides. Okay, come on now. That means that our spices, sorry about that guys, our spice is cooked. Our spice is cooked and now we're going to add our meat. I'm using beef today. You can use, this is a base for anything. You can use lamb, uh, your beef you can even do chicken as well but i'm doing beef today so okay guys so now we're going to add our meat 
So now we're going to make sure before we do any water or anything, make sure we get the meat coated. The chutney that's in the pot or the curry, curry chutney, that's what they call it. So you want to then get the meat nicely coated with that. Make sure every piece is coated. Then let that simmer for a bit before we add um, a little bit more water, etc. You can hear the pot is sizzling, right? So I want to get a little bit of browning on the meat. Okay. That's why I don't put, that's why I don't um, add any liquid at this point in time. Okay. So now is a good time for you to add some salt. I'm going to start off with a teaspoon of salt. Seasoning is very important, guys. You can maybe do it. Yeah, teaspoon. Let me show you what it looks like. So there we go. Okay. So we're going to allow this to keep on sizzling. And I'm just going to watch it, but I want to get started now on the mince and the pasta. So I've added some more liquid into the, the curry. I'm now going to add the coriander leaves. I mean, get yourself a scissors. This is so easy to cut any herbs. Okay. So I like quite a bit of coriander. So to my husband. And I know for some people, too much coriander can taste like soap. So if that is you, I'm with the coriander. A few more minutes and then I'm going to add the the lid of the pressure cooker and I'm gonna let that go for a while to get the meat nice and soft and then at the end I will add my lentils you can also before you put the lid on also add your potatoes at this point in time but I don't add potatoes I just do um, the lentils okay let's simmer for a little bit still and then we're gonna put the lid back on and let that start cooking I've put the lid on for the beef and I've chosen the meat option and now I'm going to do my mince this is about 500 gram mince and I've just chopped in a very small onion because like I told you guys my son is not an onion person normally I would use my onion powder just to give some more onion flavor so we're going to just tip this over a slight browning on this and then we're going to add our the little cooking sauce and tomato sauce and then we get that let that simmer away i've also put on a kettle of water i'm going to put the pasta on now so for a quick little cheap put your kettle of water on put your um once the water is boiled tip it over into your pot with your pasta add your salt because remember the water is already it's already boiled it's already warm so add your salt and then that will quickly cook the pasta through for you guys as well. So we're going to give this some time to sizzle and then we're going to come back to this pot. I'm only doing half a bag of the macaroni and I'm going to add some salt and a little bit of oil. Remember what they say about pasta? It's the, the water has got to be as salty as the sea. So I've already added one teaspoon. I'm going to add two more. And then I'm just going to mix it through. And this is what is this one. So just mix it through. So I'm going to let that simmer. While the mince simmers away as well. So we almost cooked basically. The mince is practically done. I'm just going to let it cook a little bit longer. Add a little bit more. Some more water. And then I'm going to add my tomato sauce. Okay guys, so I've just swapped my pots around. I'm I want the mince to do a slow simmer and I want the pasta to start boiling away. Let's just start tidying up as we go along. We're almost there for us. So this is the tomato sauce that I use. It's the all gold. It's the 70% less sugar. So this is the one I get for the fan. Okay, so I'm going to add about two tablespoons of this into here but you can add any tomato sauce and taste as you go along which is also very important guys taste your food as you go along i'm not tasting because i'm fasting as you know 
So we're gonna add, like I said, two tablespoons. You can add whichever tomato sauce that you have. I'm doing two tablespoons of this. I might do a third. I'm not sure, but we'll see. Okay. And now my pasta is really dancing. So I like that. And the reason why I'm stirring this, guys, they say that they normally say that the oil is to help the pasta not stick, right? But it still sticks. So I'm gonna turn the heat down just slightly because the water is now really boiling. And I stir it like this because I don't want any of my macaroni stuck into the pot at the bottom because I'm gonna use the same pot to do the white sauce for the macaroni and the mince. Let's turn the baby down. We're gonna add our tomato sauce now. The mince is um, practically cooked, but I'm, I'm gonna add it now and just give it a few more minutes to cook. One, I think I'm gonna do three. Three. Okay, so here we go. Just mix that through. And a nice tip when you do a bolognese or whether you do a, a um, what's it called, a lasagna, to deepen the flavors, you can add some red wine as well. But that you would add way in the beginning because you want the alcohol to sort of cook out. You want the alcohol to sort of um, evaporate and just leave the flavor of the red wine, etc. So that is another nice tip. I'm going to give my I'm going to give my macaroni and minces, uh, sorry, a stir as well. And I can already feel that the macaroni is practically almost done. We don't want to overcook the macaroni. So we're going to let it go for a few more minutes. And then we can strain. And then I'm going to put my rice onto this plate and let that simmer away. Okay, just steam the rice so it can cook through properly. Are you enjoying the cooking along with me thus far? So my meat is almost done. There's still two more minutes to go. It's going to start beeping just now. My pasta is almost done. The mince is practically done. I'm just going to have to add the pasta to the mince and then I'm going to do a little white sauce, create a bit of cheese on there. I'm just going to put the lid on and then let it simmer on low while it's on there just to get the cheese to get the cheese um just to get the cheese melted. Then once my meat is done, I'm going to add some lentils. You can use whichever lentils you want to use. You don't have to use lentils. You can even do um, beans or something to that effect, butter beans, etc. I like to use the lentil, it's high in fiber. Good for you as well. So yeah, then I'm almost done, guys. Can you believe it? And I still need to get ready for a party. If I didn't have to film everything, I could do all of this in about an hour, hour and a half max that I would be done cooking. Typically, I would make some um, grilled chicken as well for Sunday lunch, um, but I'm not going to be cooking all of these things. So I'm, I'm, I don't want to cook too much and then I'm going to be stre uh, stressed for time etc so I just thought I'll, I always do a curry on a Sunday I always do chicken on a Sunday either salads depending on how the weather is today would have been just salads and I typically do a pasta as well whether it's a spaghetti whether it's a lasagna or whether it's a macaroni like I'm doing now it's done I'm going to show you everything once everything is done then I'll show you what everything looks like and then I need to get done I need to get it's peeping. So let me stop rambling. Everything is done. Let me show you my final product. <laughs> okay, we've got the curry. I just added some fresh dania for the last five minutes of the cooking process. My basmati rice is cooked and nice and fluffy and not clumps. And then I've got my stove top macaroni and cheese with the mince. That's all done. Time for me to get ready to get dressed and hit the road because we've got a long drive ahead of us so let's go all done ready to go i'm just waiting for my little one to come down and then we're gonna hit the road off to the kiddies party we go finally at the place got lost a bit but we made it thank the lord so we are here so i'm gonna get out now I'm gonna take a few videos around and um yeah so let's go
should have actually packed swimming costume as well. But we're just waiting. They're going to start just now. Yes, it's fine. Hi there guys, so as you can see we are being chased away by the rain. We're on our way back home now. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Your support is much appreciated. I love you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!